Good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 323. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google Plus and the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have David Rosam. David uh, is a, a leading internet marketer based in West Sussex uh, uh, on the UK. Everybody's from the UK tonight, except me. Um, David can be found at davidrosam.com. UK, you know, Jim, all of it. Okay, David. Um, <laughs> Tim Capper is CEO of onlineownership.com. Uh, he's based in Corby in uh, about 100 miles north of London. Um, uh, Tim can be found at onlineownership.com. And um, he's also a Google product expert on the Google My Business community and a local search expert. Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, he's also in the UK and uh, resides in Wimbledon, um, in, in the, the, the uh, uh, close proximity of London. And, in London. Uh, pardon? In London. Yeah. And Masataki is also a Google product expert on the... Uh, um, AdSense uh, community. All right, we've got um, uh, for only five questions tonight. Uh, our first one uh, is from Todd Wise. Uh, it's titled This of Our Site or Not. Um, Todd said, Okay, I have a gut uh, opinion on this, uh, but wanted to get other opinions. Uh, this is my first time dealing with a situation like this. I have a client that I'm working with primarily as the developer. I was cleaning some stuff up that Google Search Console had caught, um, and I noticed uh, that the second biggest provider of inbound links happens to be from a user signature on a member message board type site, totally not related to the business. The poster is, was uh, a manager. Disavow the site or not? Not. Uh, again, uh, second highest number of links, but not related to the site. Um, I probably think that something like that would be easy to pick up and discount by Google if they wanted to. Um, I don't think they would see that as a manipulative thing, personally. Um, has the site seen any, like, decline? Do you believe that this needs cleaning up? I mean, I typically wouldn't. But, you know, yeah, probably wouldn't. Uh, at the minute, go down that road. Um, I think I'll have a good look at the the message board and uh, yeah, if, um, if it's, it's you know if it's just your new run your message board, don't worry. If it's something nefarious, then uh, perhaps yeah, yeah. If it yeah, if it looked intentional or manipulative, yeah, have a look at it that way. Does it look intentional? Yeah, it doesn't look intentional, but also, you know, what what else? What's the message board about? Um, if it's uh, if it's about um, oh, I don't know. If it's about how to make a bomb. Uh, yeah, yeah. He said it. He said it's not re not really related. Um, but even then, you know, sites pick up fucking links. Oh, excuse me, pick up links from everywhere, man. Uh, you should see that some of the crap that links to me, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not too bothered by it. Um, as long as the site keeps going in the right direction, but, and you pick up stuff from everywhere. Um, 
Russia. But, uh, I, yeah, I would look at it in the context of, of, of how that was added, you know, um, and then make a decision based on that. Yeah. yeah. And I also put out Michael Martin is uh, our forum uh, stalwart who answers questions through the week. Yeah. He says, I would not disavow the links uh, unless it was obvious that they were placed for manipulative purposes. One link um, is all that they're thinking of here. Uh, one link's not going to affect anything. Um, I think anyway. you said it was in the signature and the person's obviously been quite active on the forum. So I think there might be, might be multiple of them. Yeah. All right, will we call this an answer for Todd? I'm going to record that as a yes. Let's move on to the next one on our run list number two. It's from JL Faveria. The School of SEO. Um, JL Faveria was thinking last night about marketing schools and wondered, is there an official class or program taught by schools to learn SEO anywhere? Well, there's plenty of digital marketing courses, but not necessarily SEO. I think I, re I read somewhere that Steve Weidemann might be doing an SEO course, but that's in the States somewhere, I think. That's correct. Um, but, you know, the thing is, yeah, I, you know, I, I personally don't have any SEO courses in the UK. Uh, there's a lot of individual people that run them. Uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that that do in you know that, that run their own SEO courses, but nothing that's officially recognised in that sense. Now, there's a there's a whole uh, load of stuff. Um, a whole load. There are probably three or four courses mentioned um, in the answers there. Um, and Steve Wiedemann is one of them. Um, but no, I, I'm not aware of a, an SEO course at a uh, at a college or university or seat of learning in the UK either. That someone can tell us. There's also the thing is that this is a, an industry where uh, change happens uh, almost daily. It would be very hard to, to make a course that was the definitively uh, harmless. And, um, yeah. All right. Uh, um, and we were looking also at the Google um, um, is offering a 40-hour course. We were reading that earlier on uh, tonight. Um, uh, with in conjunction with the Internet Advertising Bureau, that's worth a search. What was the search, uh, um, David? Um, that you did um, it was learn with Google or something? Yeah, it's uh, it's the digital. It's the <laughs> what, what what did I do? Um, it's a digital marketing thing. That it's an agency that does it. You know, it, it's an agency they use to to help people. Yeah, it's under Grow Google. It's Google Digital Garage. Oh, yeah, that's it. Showing this here part of the world. Okay. All right, uh, we're charging through these. Half our work is done. Um, Can we go, uh, Joanna Yana? Lasnika asks a question titled, Those Google Plus Badges. She goes on to say, we were all told to add it to your site during the RHEL Author 2011-2013 days. What are people doing with them now that G, G Plus has scaled? I see. Uh, remove them because that's what, what Google said. Search Console is telling people to um, to remove all your G plus links. So um, remove them. Yeah. 
Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I think that they're, they're they're not doing anything. So why have them? Okay, let's uh, move on to the next. Scott Clark um, has a question titled "When you can't move forward without client content." It's never happened to me. <laughs> Um, he said today's oh, that's right. He put a video. Please don't put a video there anymore, Scott, because we we can't um, we can't um, scrape the content to, to put in uh, our run list. Anyway, uh, today's question by video: How do other consultants and agencies handle the moment when you can't move forward without client content? Well. For me personally, you know, there's obviously when I look at things and when, when, I, when I'm providing quotes and that, um, you know, within that, I'm like, right, you, you, we're going to need work on this, that, and, you know, possibly some more in-depth content uh, on site. Um, choice is yours. I can direct you to copywriters. Or and you know with a with a content plan, or um, I can sort that out for you. Uh, choice is yours. You know you you're more than welcome to look around. But you know that's a part of my thing. If they want me to do it, then that gets gets added to the you know the budget and the quote. Thank you, Tim. That's more or less what I do. Um, sometimes you get along somewhere along the, the line, and it's obvious that you need some some content um and um you have to you have to bring that into the general discussions um i've said i've said to clients in the past well you know if you want that content um i can do it i can either add x amount to my monthly fee or i can take x number of hours out of my contracted hours um yeah um when it comes to uh, when it comes to trying to persuade um, clients to um, to provide content, that uh, can be that can be fun. I've I've got one client at the moment who who is very 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 slow in uh, in providing content. Um, they've just taken on a uh, an internal freelance to to un to unblock it. They you know they realise they just can't produce the stuff. So. They've um, they've gone the uh, get someone cheap in house um, route. Um, and she's doing a good doing a good job. Mm -hmm. But it's it's uh, you know you can't threaten a client. You know you, you can just talk to them uh, in in your uh, in, in your normal monthly telephone call or Skype uh, discussion or whatever um but yeah just keep on the case uh and try and find out ways of unblocking it yeah it's 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 the the, the bane of um well, was no I'm, I'm almost retired now but um um the, the bane of your life if if they fail it's all your fault um if if they succeed they did it all on their own <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're such a cynic. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay, so that's number four. Here's number five. Um, Andres Philippe Echevarria asked a question, and I, I, I tried to answer this um, on the group uh, on Facebook, the Damasio Questions Facebook group, but uh, I just couldn't fathom um, Andres' question. Maybe you guys have a, uh, know this uh, um, automatically. But anyway, it's titled Redirect and Canonical Mix. Uh, he said, canonical question, the root domain directs 302 to a subfolder. Should point out that Google begs everybody not to use 302s. Um, he said, but this canonical subfolder points to the root domain. Um, should this subfolder have a canonical pointing to the root domain.com? 
I'm thoroughly confused. Yeah, I am. Because if the domain, the root, let's say example.com, redirects to subfolder, example.com um, slash example, and if that folder is pointing to the root, there would be a loop. But that's not happening. So <laughs> um, I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. Yeah, and, and also I, I don't understand the purpose um, of um, if if you um, want the canonical to point back to your original position, why, why redirect in the first place? Yeah, but, but in that case, three hundred two is the proper response because it is saying the domain dot com is the actual that should be the place, but I'm temporarily moving that to. Uh, domain.com slash index right so then the canonical has to be domain.com so in so far as that logic goes it makes sense to me because 302 says this address is the correct address but temporarily it's on another place or on another address so in that sense this makes sense to me, but I don't think this is a permanent arrangement, or it shouldn't be. If it is, if this is the permanent um, arrangement in that root goes to root slash index slash, then that should be the canonical and it should be a 301 redirect. Hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see Andre's um, set a, a new question, open up a new question so that we can follow it up next next week because I'd, I'd like to know what he means and I've done a little bit of this. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to me why you know he's trying to do this unless there is some reason that prevents him from putting, um, you know, having an orderly, orderly structure could be a hosting um, construction. Yeah. So it, it sounds as if that he has to have a, this particular website's content under a subdirectory and, you know, the index slash um, subdirectory and not directly on the root. But that really doesn't seem to be a good solution. To whatever issue he's having. Yeah. All right. Um, any, anybody else on this? I think when I click this, it's, yes, it is that time again. Well, we've done it again, guys. We've answered all of the questions asked on the SEO questions community on Google Plus and the dumb SEO questions Facebook group. My thanks to Masataki Waisa, Tim Kappa, and David Rosam for their contribution tonight. We'll be back at the same time next week uh, to do this uh, all again. Um, but uh, until then, um, it's uh, 